Thank you, Reginald. I was speaking here while I was on mute. Once again, is this like, you know, time four or five <laughs> that I've done this? You should be able to hear me now. Thank you for putting that in the chat. Uh, very nice, guys. Welcome, welcome. Uh, so this is a, another version of forcing or non-forcing. I apologize. I had to reschedule from last night to tonight. I had uh, something going on last night that I uh, kind of had to do. So I am back tonight, 6 p.m. I thought this was a reasonable time to test out with you guys. Uh, once again, guys, I forgot to put the sign up as far as how you get into Bitbox. But if you just type bitbox.xyz right into your browser, you will be able to bid these hands along with us. So just give you guys a few seconds to do that and then we will start this off uh, i got a couple of things on the screen uh for you guys tomorrow night i'm testing out uh zoom so i need a little help for that so i am having a nice class i'm calling cocktails and control bits you know, grab your favorite cocktail grab a seat by your computer or your phone and join me for this lesson on zoom all you have to do to sign up for this is go to my website, learnbridge.nyc, boom, and you can sign up for it right here. Click to register, and that'll bring you to a page where you can register for that. It's totally free. It's probably going to be about 30 to 45 minutes of a class because I really want to kind of get you guys, uh, get as many of you guys in there so I can test the software and also give you guys a little fun on a Saturday night if you're if you're bored on either the East Coast or the West Coast. So 7 p.m. tomorrow night, sign up for it on LearnBridge.nyc. And then Monday night is another version of the Rob and Gavin show. We're actually uh, teaming up for a lesson on competitive auctions. Uh, throughout this last couple of weeks for on of online lessons, I've noticed that a lot of you are struggling in this area, which is not you know surprising. This is a very tough part of the auction to master, right? When the opponents are kind of competing effectively against you, you want to be able to solve those situations. So Gavin and I are going to have a nice 90 minute class from uh, the comfort of your own home on Monday evening. So that is still open. There's still some slots in that. Once again, you can sign up same place, www.learnbridge.nyc. And now we have a fair complement of people in YouTube and on Bidbox. So why don't we start? Once again, guys, any questions about anything we're about to do, you can throw that in the chat. Uh, you should be able to do this from any device. If you're on mobile or anything, just go to YouTube and you just might have to pop another window open. Uh, could be a little struggle if you are if you want to go to Bitbox, but you can watch this from anywhere. So here we go, guys, forcing or non-forcing. And we start off with a very common auction. Your partner opened one club, you responded one spade, and partner jumped to two no trump. So is this forcing or non-forcing? And that is your only choice here. You're just going to be putting in forcing or non-forcing. And then we may have some bids to make after you make this choice, but that's usually going to be that first choice. People filing in here. I'm loving that. Bitbox.xyz to bid along with us, folks. Learnbridge.nyc to sign up for these classes that you see on the screen. All right, we have a race. Okie dokie. It's funny. Uh, we have, m looks like most of you, 53% are saying non-forcing, and that's what I'm going to say, because that is the correct bid. Now, this rebid of 2 no trump is rarely going to be passed. You're very frequently going to be playing game after partner opens and rebids 2 no. So that doesn't mean this isn't strong. However, this is not a forcing bid. And this is a bid that can and should be passed sometimes. Okay, so this, while it shows a very strong hand and is rarely going to result in not playing game, right? Usually when this your hand is this good, you're going to play a game opposite all but partner's worst. But I might be able to convince you of a hand that might be partner's worst. And let's take a look at an example of that. So here your partner opened one club. 
and you bid a spade, and they bid two now, just like our previous auction. But now you have a hand here, and it is your bid. Uh, anyone else having some issues? Looks like Penny is not is not connected. You can't hear us, Penny. Everybody okay out there? All good, okay. So let's make our bids, guys. Yeah, uh, L. Wong, you, if you uh, open a browser on whatever mobile device you're on and type in bidbox.xyz, it will bring you there. So it's not an app. You don't have to download anything. You just need to get to a web browser and type that specifically in the address bar at the top of your screen, bidbox.xyz, right here where I'm highlighting on the screen. All right, guys. So let's see. Let's see the results here. I would always pass. And that is because I have a flat six count and partners just shown 18, 19. So in these cases, we want to be passing, right? We have at most 25 points and our shape is absolutely terrible. And this is honestly a hand that just is pretty sure it's not going to be making uh, it's not going to be making game opposite partners 18, 19, right? Mainly because of its shape. So here we would be passing. And there are times also that when your partner opens the bidding, let's say they open a club like they did on this hand, you may in fact be bidding with like a four or a five count if you have short clubs and a major to bid, right? So you want to be able to pass in these situations, especially even though partner has shown 18, 19 balanced, right? It's not necessarily clear that you have game, especially when you know you have a bad hand. Uh, Reginald, the question was, when does fast arrival uh, apply? Uh, fast arrival applies when we're in a game forcing situation. Right? So if we both know we're in a game force, we can slow down if we have extra values or speed up if we don't. All right. Okay, good. Let's take this one. Yeah, guys, if you're having any issues with either YouTube or with uh, Bitbox, just refresh your browser and everything will come back to normal, we hope. So now let's take a look at another auction. Same auction, different hand again. We, our partner opened a club, we bid a spade, and partner jumped to no. What are we doing? Make your bid with this hand. All right. Club of spade two now. And I'll tell you that uh, in all of these auctions, you can assume you're playing a version of kind of two over one with basic gadgets, if that helps at all. Okay, gonna give it a couple more seconds, let you guys put your bids in at Bidbox, bidbox.xyz. Make your call and I will release the answers in a second. And I will make my bid now as well. So you can bid three no, and honestly, if you don't play something called new minor forcing, you might just bid three no Trump with this in, unless your partner's gonna think three spades is five spades maybe. But we play new minor forcing usually for this exact situation. We know it went minor, major, no trump. And we have a doubt as to where our best game is going to be. We try to play in a major if we have an eight card fit, especially if we have some shape. So here we should know for sure we have game, but we should have doubt as to where that is. So three diamonds is just a little check back to partner. And it usually says to describe their holdings in the majors. Uh, either they're going to show three spades, which is great for you. You'll play spades. Sometimes they'll show hearts and you'll bid three no trump. 
and other times they will just bid three no trumps themselves. So here you want to, you'd rarely want to give up hope on a major suit fit unless uh, you are super flat, right? So here you, you probably want to try to play spades and that is the bid that gets you there. As lot, if you bid game, you get very good partial credit here. Uh, those of you that passed, remember partner showed 18, 19 and you have an eight count, right? So that's game. And at least 25, you're at 26 at least. So you go ahead and you bid that game. All right, next case. Same auction, different hand again. Partner opened a club, you bid a spade. Partner now bid two no trump. Make your call. Club of spade, two no. What are we doing? This one might be slightly more difficult than uh, what we've seen before. All right, folks, see we have about uh, 50, 55 people in here. If you want to make these bids along with us, and if you're watching on Friday, March 27th at 6 p.m., you can make your bids right along with us at this time. So go ahead and jump in there, make your calls. And for those of you that came late, they... Little ads on the bottom there are two things that I uh, have coming up uh, the soonest. And tomorrow is a good test for me. I'm going to try giving a live bridge class on Zoom. So I'm looking for the first 100 people to sign up for this free bridge lesson. Crack open a beer or pour yourself a glass of wine and sit back and, and let's, let's bid some controls tomorrow night at 7. And then Monday night, Gavin and Rob, competitive auctions. You can sign up right at learnbridge.nyc. Just go right there and the signups are directly below. But let's get to this auction. Here the correct bid is six, no Trump. All right, partner has shown 18, 19, and we have a very nice 15 count. All right, so that's at least 33 points. Sometimes the simplest answer is the best answer. Right. We should know a few things here. We should know that we don't have a fit in a major. My right? partner did not uh, raise spades, and we only have four of them. So three diamonds we're not going to mess around with. We should also understand that we don't have a grand slam because we have 15, and partner has at most 19. That's 34 points. That's not near that, that number we want to be exploring grand slam when we're balanced, at least. So here, we just bit the slam that we know we can very likely make, and that is six, no Trump. All right, so we absolutely want to be in slam on this hand, and we do not want to make a bid that partner can pass. So for those of you that bid four no, half of the time you're going to be in six, and half of the time you're going to stay in four, because this depends on what partner is choosing here. Uh, does the queen X in clubs have value as points? Jim, that's a good question. Here it certainly does. And, and that is because of simply the number of points that we have and that we know partner has, All right? So here we have at least 33 points. Uh, it is, I know some of you out there are saying, well, what if they have the ace king of clubs or something like that? If they have that, I mean, oh, well, <laughs> it's so unlikely that there's seven points are going to be ace king in one suit that you can just disregard that possibility. And if that's happening, yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like losing to, uh, if you have a full house and losing to quads, you know, in, in a poker tournament. So so here you don't worry about those things. You just bid your hand. All right, so six now Trump is a very good spot here. Let's see another one. And so your partner opens a club and you bid a spade and partner bids two hearts. Is that forcing or non-forcing? Make your call here. 
Is it forcing the two heart bid or is the two heart bid non forcing? Can we pass? This is always a great class because um, these are relatively standard agreements, but a lot of them come up so infrequently that we just haven't seen them enough to understand, hey, am I supposed to bid here or am I not? And that's the whole point of tonight. You know, figure out when we should bid, when we should pass, all that good stuff. Bernadette, you're okay now. Okay, good, great. Yeah, if for those of you that are watching and may have had issues in the past, the biggest thing to check when you don't have volume is uh, the YouTube browser itself. Uh, a lot of times that defaults to mute, uh, and you might just be watching and seeing me blah, 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 and not hearing anything. Half of the time it's me being on mute and not realizing it, but the other half it, it could be you guys on mute. Ooh, you tried to send a super chat and it failed. Oh, I see. I don't see super chat here. I wonder what happened. Uh, let me put it back in. If you have popped out your chat bar, um, you will not have super chat. I just noticed. Uh, so, so if you pop out your chat bar, meaning take it away from the, uh, the thing you should, uh, you don't see a super chat, but if you put it back in to your, to your little browser there, you should be able to super chat. Super chat is just that dollar sign. If you want to donate anything to your instructors, that is fine. It is not a requirement. Don't feel like you need to do it, but you know, it's uh, certainly something that I'm very thankful for if you do. <laughs> All right, so let's take a peek. I've got a lot of votes here and looks like 62% of you are correct in saying this is forcing. However, there is a reasonable percentage, 36, that think it's non-forcing. This is forcing because this is a reverse. And I know this is a very confusing uh, situation. R reversing is something that doesn't happen very often, first of all, and it also can be uh, can be missed. Right? But a reverse is when we open the bidding, and then our next bid is at the two level in a higher ranking suit. Right? So here, the our partner there opened one club, we responded one spade, and they bid two hearts, but two hearts is past the level of two spades. And this is one of only two forcing bids the opening bidder will ever be able to make. The reverse here, the other one is the jump shift. And that would kind of be, let's say they opened a spade and you bid, sorry, let's say they open a heart and you bid a spade and they bid three clubs. If you reverse these bids by the opener, that's a jump shift, right? So, so here it's just kind of the order of operations that makes this very similar, just not necessarily as strong as a jump shift. So two hearts is one of two forcing bids that the opener can ever make. And this is what it looks like. Two hearts certainly forcing. So we have to bid at least one time. And I will leave it open for a second if you guys have any questions on that, because I know... Reverses are pretty much confusing to every advancing player, okay? And so don't feel bad if you don't see these very often or if if you either miss them or you actually incorrectly reverse with just a normal opening hand. So the question in the chat is, so after one club, one spade, opener must bid one no trump if he doesn't have 17 plus? Not, not always, right? They can rebid their club suit. They could, in some cases, if they're not open a club, if they open a diamond, they have a lot of rebids. So you're not necessarily always in a spot where you have to either choose one no or a reverse. However, you have to understand that making a reverse is only for those hands that are very, very strong. It's a reverse if you raise your own suit or partner. It is not, Reginald. Good question. So let's say it went a club, partner bid a spade like they did, sorry, we bid a spade here, and partner bid two spades. That's just a minimum hand with four card spade support. The difference is they're raising a suit. They're not bidding a new suit. And if you think of this, the logic of the auction in front of you guys, if we wanted to go back to clubs on this auction that's on the screen, what level would we have to do that at? It would have to be the three level. And our one spade bid didn't show any amazing hand, right? We showed six plus points. 
So a partner is willing to commit us to the three level, knowing that we cannot pass two hearts, then they must have a very good hand to be able to compensate for the lack of values that might be in our own hand. All right, guys, that this is obviously a tough spot. Reverses are a challenge for pretty much everybody. But let's talk about what we do with certain hands in responding to a reverse. So this time, partner opened the club. We bid a spade and partner bid two hearts. So make your bid with this hand. And remember that reverse is absolutely forcing. Okay, going to give it a couple more seconds, but uh, I, I know you can uh, predict that there are, there's a lot of heat on two bids specifically after this reverse here. And those two bids are both in the heart suit for sure. Right, so I'm going to bid three hearts and then I, I want to take a moment to kind of explain the situation. So let's talk about what we do after a reverse, okay? We, we certainly want to show or be able to show extra values and or minimums. So four hearts would actually be the minimum here. And here's what we should know. Partner is never going to reverse and then pass a bid below game. Right? If, they if they've reversed, they're certainly looking to go forward with these hands. A lot of expert partnerships play uh, a little add-on here to show a bad hand which is very helpful because this is one of those spots that we kind of need to be able to show a bad hand so that every other bid can be game forcing. But just understand, kind of like old school bridge, if, you're, if you've been playing for a while, when partner shows a very good hand like this, right? And when they reverse, they're never passing the next bit that's not game. So three hearts here would technically show a slightly better hand than four. Uh, those of you that bid four hearts, you might not have kind of understood the position you were in, but as long as we all were bidding hearts at either the three or four level, we should be doing okay. All right. Yeah, sorry. I'm not sure what's happening with that super chat, Carol. Maybe it's a glitch. Uh, looks like it's working okay, at least from what I can see. But again, I'm relatively new with that, so I am not sure. If anyone else wants to try it, um, you're welcome to, but I'm not sure what's happening. All right. So this auction, our partner opened a no trump, and we bid two diamonds, which is a transfer, standard stuff. Partner bid two hearts, and we have now bid three clubs. Is our three club bid forcing or non-forcing? Forcing or non-forcing for three clubs here. And Carol, I, I appreciate the effort, by the way. <laughs> Sorry if, if it's not working for you. It's certainly not your fault. There, Judy, Judy got it to work. Okay, so it appears to be working. So maybe it's something on uh, on your spot, Carol. But again, I appreciate the super chat, Judy. Thank you so much. And uh, Carol, I appreciate the effort for sure. Don't give up on it. All right, so this one's pretty straightforward. All of you are on the same path of the no here. Uh, for sure forcing. Okay, so just make this rule forever. After a transfer or even after statement, a new suit at the three level is just game forcing and natural. This usually suggests that they have exactly five hearts and four or more clubs. So they're just usually trying to figure out if they have a heart fit before they commit to the right game. Another thing, guys, this is always unbalanced. If, if this hand were balanced, it would have transferred in bid three no. Right? So we know when partner transfers and then bids a new suit at the three level that this is some some sort of unbalanced hand with two suits okay beautiful next case two hearts by our partner three clubs by our right hand opponent double by us forcing or non-forcing 
two hearts by partner, ready bit three clubs, we double. Is that forcing or non forcing? I love these 50-50 questions. And this one is perfectly 50-50 at the moment. 16 forcing, 16 non-forcing. Give you guys a couple more seconds to take a look. Bitbox.xyz in your browser, guys. Make the bids along with us. Ready to roll. All right. This is non-forcing. In fact, it is a penalty double. And this is that rule. I think we've we've had we maybe touched on this at least a couple times in the last week or so. After a preemptive bid by either one of us, our if our side preempts, every subsequent double is penalty in nature. So, two hearts, three clubs. Double says uh, they're in trouble, partner. They bid three clubs. I have a stack of clubs in a good hand. I want to defend. So this not only is non-forcing, it's one of those, if you bid partner, we're not playing next week at the club. I'm going to sign up with uh, Judy over here instead. All right, so do not ever bid when partner doubles or when, when you double, partner should never bid after we've had a preemptive bid by our side. Okay, good, good. Here's another good one. Very common situation, at least, or common discussion point. Pass by partner, four hearts on our right, and we double. Is this forcing or non-forcing? Forcing or non-forcing? You get sign up tomorrow night free cocktails and control bids lesson. I'm trying to get you guys out of your comfort zone, maybe make you have a cocktail before class because I want you nice and loose for those slam bidding uh, decisions you're going to have tomorrow night. I'm just going to give you a quick lesson on control bids and give you some practice hands. And uh, it's mainly a, a favor to me if you join. Uh, I will have maybe a glass of wine or a beer with me and we will cheers and uh, talk about controls and I will get to test a new platform for some live lessons. So you guys would be doing me a great favor. Sign up. Uh, first hundred people, free lesson tomorrow night. All right. It's looking like another very even choice on forcing or not forcing. And this is going to be a couple more seconds. Uh, yeah, Kelly, very, very good point. And, and uh, the instructions are kind of right on uh, learnbridge.nyc, at least where to go. And after you click on that register button, it's going to give you instructions on how to sign in and or download Zoom. You may need it. A lot of you are already using it from what I understand. So it might not be too big of a thing. But for those of you that are technologically challenged, maybe, I would just recommend making sure you get a good read of that confirmation email you'll get after you register. Okay, guys. Uh oh, Carol, take care of yourself. Uh, David, you can have as many cocktails as you want and or need. <laughs> you, this is not going to be a, a uh, judged and or scored experience, so feel free to, to tie one on and join me on Zoom tomorrow night. <laughs> yeah, an old-fashioned, whatever, whatever you want to bring with you, just uh, bring, bring, bring it to the uh, broadcast and we'll have some fun. All right, so let me, let me get, go through this one first. This is a forcing bid. Because this is a takeout double. And look at this, guys. We were even the entire time. 19 of you and 19 of you on each side of this one. Uh, let's talk about a rule that we're going to make going forward forever. When the opponents are preempting, meaning they've either made a preemptive bid in front of us or they've made you know, a preemptive bid and it's gone two passes, it doesn't matter. If they're in a preemptive auction, we should agree with our partner that all of our doubles are takeout 
below and including the level of four hearts. So everything up to the bid of four hearts, including that bid, double is takeout. Everything above four hearts, four spades and beyond, our doubles are more penalty or cards-ish in nature. Okay, and this is important because of the hands I'm about to show you, but this is a rule for all time. Standard bridge is we play doubles as takeout up to and including four hearts. So this is a classic example of a four level preempt that we want to have a takeout bit available for. Uh, same would go as if our left hand opponent opened a heart and it went past four hearts. Double would still be takeout because that four heart bit is a penalty, or excuse me, is a uh, is a closeout, is a preemptive bit, right? So we want to have the ability to describe hands that are strong and especially in these cases, rate to have a fair amount of shape in them. Okay. All right, let's see this next one here. We have started this auction. We were the dealer here. We opened a diamond. Our partner bid a spade. We then bid one no trump and partner jumped to three spades. So let me just dial that in again. We opened a diamond, our partner bid a spade, we bid a no trump, and our partner bid three spades. Is the three spade bid forcing or non-forcing? Uh, Demetrius, I'm not quite sure I understand that question in the chat. Maybe you can rephrase it? Sorry, buddy. Armand's question from the last one, when is partner allowed to pass to convert a takeout double to a penalty? Usually only when they have a stack of the opponent's suit. So your your partner should be bidding in all of those occasions that they just don't have a whole bunch of the opponent's trump suit all right the only the only reasonable time to be you know kind of floating doubles like that is is in that case right obviously at at, at different times there could be certain uh, odd hands you might float a double with but the majority of the time you're just going to be bidding unless you have a whole bunch of the opponent's suit and good percentage of you making the right choice here. This is a non-forcing bid. This is invitational. Partner is essentially showing a six card spade suit with like a good 10 or 11 points basically, right? So they're just trying to see if they can play game and they're not even necessarily sure where that's gonna be, but obviously they have six or more spades and some sort of hand they want to invite with. Okay, so definitely not forced to bid. You could certainly pass and, and sometimes will for sure. All right. So what do you bid after this auction with this hand? Right, you've opened a diamond. And I know some of you are saying, why the heck would I open this hand? That is a 12-point hand. You open every 12-point hand for the rest of time. Make sure you make that a rule. But you did open a diamond, partner bid a spade. You bid a no trump, and they jump to three spades. Make your call now after this And so think about uh, think about what partner is is asking, right? They're they're at uh, a point where they need to know where you are in the range that you showed, and the range that you showed was twelve to fourteen specifically. And this not only is only twelve, but it's a pretty ugly twelve, right? We. We certainly don't have a great hand for a suit contract either because we have a lot of slow developing tricks. So on this hand, we would absolutely just be passing, 
All right, 12 ugly points. Partners inviting, we're at the lower end of our range. That's usually kind of the, the way we should be thinking about these invitational bits, right? Are we good for the range we've shown or are we bad for it? And we are definitely bad for it. Good, good, good. Same auction, different hand. Now I'll make your bid. <laughs> Jay Frizz is gonna get getting excited about his three tens on the last part. <laughs> The last hand had 14 cards? What? Did I miss something? Let me think of the shape there. If it had 14 cards, we all got that one wrong. The correct bid was to pull out the director card from your uh, bidding box. And if it did, I'll, I apologize. That's what happens when you put some hands together at 2 o'clock in the morning, I think. Yeah, T stands for 10, by the way. This hand definitely has 13 cards, but it's possible the last one did have 14. Is it, it was 2, 4, 5, 2, I think, though, maybe. All right, uh, this one, it looks like we don't need a ton of time on. And notice, folks, this is 12 points. It's the same 12 points we had last time, but much, much different. Uh, and it's because of the quick tricks that we have and the very nice side five card diamond suit so they're both 12 point hands however the last one had slow tricks ugly distribution and this one sorry not ugly distribution but kind of scattered values let's put it that way this one has primed out quick tricks and a side source of tricks so here we certainly kick it into game and the added bonus is we have one more trump than we did last time as well. So here even our shortness gets better because we just have more trump. Totally different animal. Same number of points, however, not uh, not really close as far as which hand you would prefer to be holding. All right, next case. So we opened a diamond. Our partner bit a heart and we bit a spade. Is our one spade bit forcing? Make your call here. Diamond, a heart, a spade is one spade forcing. <laughs> Double dummy with the the gross sex. Yeah, that that I've never seen that movie, uh, and for a movie I've never seen, I've certainly talked about it quite often. Uh, with uh, mainly to just uh, make fun of Zach and, and Adam, but uh, but that's just you know par for the course, I think. But yeah, I hear that's very good. If any of you are, if you can find it, I'm not sure where it is, but one of the best videos uh, about Bridge and about the the cheating scandal a few years ago is called uh, Aces and Knaves. K n a v e s. Aces and Knaves. It is. A great video and it's great for uh, even non bridge players it gives like a very uh, good introduction into what the game is and how it's played and it interviews you know all the top players about not only bridge itself but also just uh, the cheating scandal that happened it's fascinating stuff and some of the uh, some of my favorite quotes come from that movie very 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 cool and wow lots of people Thinking this one spade bit is forcing, it is non-forcing for sure. Now let's let's just dial this into two bits. The opening bidder has only two rebits that are forcing ever. And those are the reverse and the jump shift. Now there might be some other conventional bids that will be forcing if you agree, but I'm saying in a standardish auction. The reverse and the jump shift are the only two forcing bids that the opening bidder can ever make. So while one spade shows a wide range of points still, like 12 to 17-ish at this moment, it is still not forcing. If we reverse this and make us the responder, and let's say our partner opened a club, 
all of the bids we made were forcing because new suits are forcing by responder. Okay, the opening bidder has two choices to force as as a rebid: reverse and jump shift, and those are both very very strong bids. The normal rebids of partner, even new suits, as long as they're not a reverse or a jump shift, are absolutely non-forcing. All right, very nice. Next case. So we continue. Same auction, diamond, partner bid a heart, we bid a spade, and partner bid two hearts. Is two hearts forcing? That's responder, responding one heart, and then repeating their hearts, bidding two hearts. Is two hearts forcing? This one is too easy, too easy for you guys. Non-forcing for sure. Now this this says, essentially I have a six card heart suit and I have like six to nine points, bad, bad hand, all right? And any situation, any seat you're in basically, the opener or the responder, when you open and rebid a suit, you're showing a minimum. When you respond and rebid a suit, you're showing a minimum for sure, right? So you're just always showing those minimums from either side of that table, all right? Here we opened, sorry, our partner opened a diamond. Sorry, we opened a diamond. Let me just clear the cobwebs up here. <laughs> our partner responded a heart. We bid a spade and our partner bid two clubs. Is two clubs forcing or non-forcing? So don't uh, put anything into the chat. If you want to make these bids along with us, just log into bidbox.xyz. I'll just bidbox.xyz to make your bid or your choice. Don't put those into a chat. And this one I will go very quickly with as well. After I just type this in here, bidbox.xyz, very nice. This is forcing for sure, All right? This is absolutely forcing. In fact, this is game forcing. This is fourth suit forcing. Me, Reginald, you are absolutely right. All right. So this is artificial game forcing. So clearly we have to bid and we'll end up being in games at some point, right? But at this point, we just know it's forcing. This is a special one. We opened a diamond. Our partner bid a heart. We bid a spade and now partner bid three clubs. Is three clubs forcing or non-forcing? Uh, Armand, fourth suit forcing doesn't show or deny weakness in clubs, right? So the last hand there when partner bid clubs, they did not show anything in clubs, right? They, they could literally have any holding. What they have shown is a hand that can play game. So it's an artificial bid. It has nothing to do with clubs at all. Uh, Jim, that's a good question. At the one level, could we play fourth suit forcing? The only auction that's kind of relevant in is a club, a diamond, a heart, a spade. And th that, I would just say, make an agreement with your partner and stick with it there. Okay. This is a special one. And, and it's it, it, the reason it's coming right after the last one is we got to see this auction, which was fourth suit forcing on the last one. But this our partner jumped to three clubs, which is why this is non-forcing, okay? The reason it's non-forcing is when we play fourth suit forcing, and we definitely should, it's a very useful conventional agreement to have, we can't bid clubs naturally without game forcing. So this three club bid essentially becomes a shapely hand with hearts and clubs, invitational. If they wanted to game force, they had the ability to do so by bidding two clubs. So this three club bid cannot be strong. And if we don't have any agreement as to what else this could be, this would just be, hey, I have clubs and I do not have a game forcing hand. I'm probably invitational. I have clubs and I have at least four hearts. All right, so this one you have to think about what, what did two clubs mean? And you'll come to the realization if you just look at the cards, oh, two clubs would have been game forcing. 
So three clubs just has to be, okay, I just wanted to bid clubs naturally and I cannot game force. Because think about it, if Hardner had a game forcing hand with clubs and hearts, they would still start with two clubs, game force, and then they bid clubs naturally afterwards. That's a very tricky one because you have to think about uh, partners, other options in the club suit at lower levels. All right, I'm going to skip by some of these that uh, I think are too easy for you. And that one is goes for it okay so we opened a spade our partner bid a no trump and we bid two hearts and we play the forcing no trump so we we announced that as forcing and now we bid two hearts is our bid forcing or non-forcing Well, Demetrius, this is based on partnership agreement. What we're talking about is a club, a diamond, a heart, a spade. Uh, there are several ways you can actually play those bits interchangeably to show either game force or make them both game forcing. But that is the only one we would have to worry about. The rest is clear when we're playing fourth suit forcing that. It's just always that fourth suit. Okay, this one was probably pretty easy for you guys as well. Yeah, for sure. This is non-forcing, once again. This is five spades and four hearts at least. That's all we know, right? It is a relative minimum. Still could be up to like 17, but certainly not forcing at all. And remember, look at where you are at the table. If you're the opening bidder and you didn't reverse or didn't jump shift, you have not made a forcing bid, all right? You've just patterned your hand out. So after two hearts, our partner bids three clubs. Is that forcing or non-forcing? Make your choice. So we opened a spade, partner bid the forcing no trump. We bid two hearts and partner now chimes in with three clubs. Forcing or non-forcing? And for any of you that just popped in here, Cocktails and Control Bits tomorrow night. Free bridge lesson on Zoom with yours truly. And you can sign up for that right at learnbridge.nyc. www.learnbridge.nyc. Sign up right down here. Grab a cocktail. Let's learn some control bits. You might have to download Zoom. In fact, I know you'll have to download Zoom. You can do that on any device. And honestly, you're doing me a huge favor if you show up because I'll get to test out that software and see if it's a uh, good good or uh, or bad basically for holding bridge glasses and let's see oh this one we have some doubt on so let's let's establish another rule here when we bid the forcing no trump and then bid a new suit this is always 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 a sign off so partner partners auction or partners bids have suggested a very weak hand with a whole bunch of clubs six or more and they've heard us bid two suits and they said, partner, I don't care about your five spades and four hearts. I want to play three clubs. So this will be the same forever. When we bid the forcing no trump and then bid any suit at the lowest available level that's not already been bid, it is, I'm done. All right. So this is absolutely a sign off. Next case. We opened a spade, partner bid a no trump, and we bid two now, forcing or none. Spade or no trump, two now. I can't even let it continue. We already know this from the first, the first slide. All we showed is 18, 19 balanced. That's it. We didn't force the game, even though 99% of the time we're going to end in game when we rebid two no. Maybe not that high, but it's, it's in the 90s as far as percentage. We're not making a forcing bid. We're showing an exceptionally strong hand that's balanced, but we are not forcing the game or forcing a bid. Right? Partner can pass. Partner can also, if we have the system, sign off in certain ways. So here we certainly are not making a forcing bid whatsoever, and we certainly haven't game forced. I know a lot of people think that this is forcing, but not at all. 
My partner has a lot of hands that they could make a bid at the one level with and not want to play game opposite 18 points. Good, good. All right. We opened a heart. Our partner bid the forcing no trump, and we bid two spades. Is this bid that we made forcing or non-forcing? Forcing or non. A heart by us, a no trump by partner, two spades by us. Now, now we have a little break in the ranks here. Forcing or non-forcing? And I'm gonna let you guys off the hook here. This is absolutely 100% forcing because this is that reverse again from before. We opened one heart, our partner bid a no trump, and we bid two spades, which is beyond the two level of our originally bid suit, right? So if partner on this hand wanted to return to hearts, even with their worst of hands, they would have to do so at the three level. So we have forced that to happen. So our hand is absolutely strong 17 plus and this bid is one of those two bits that the opener can force again with right so this is not game forcing just forcing and strong the jump shift here for example three clubs would be not only forcing but game forcing good stuff all right so after you open a heart here your partner responds one no trump and it's your bit and this is funny because I think this was, I know this was a question in at least one of the classes I've had in the last couple of weeks, this specific shape. The question is, what do we do here when we open a heart and we play forcing no trump? So our partner bids a no trump, and now it's our choice. Armand, you're amazing. Thank you for the super chat. I really appreciate that. Carol, if you can't see the hands, uh, you, you want to just refresh your browser, right? If you're, if you're not able to see the hands in BitBox, if you refresh, it should bring you right back to where we all are at this point. Works well. We have a whole bunch of different answers here. The correct answer is getting most of the heat, which is a good sign, but we have lots of different uh, choices here. And this will happen when I give you a problem that is a legitimate problem. This is a, a, a situation where you do not have a bid that's going to show your hand in any way correctly. And the reason is we can't bid two spades. That would be a reverse showing a 17 plus unbalanced hand. We're not close to that good. Two hearts, which show six or more hearts. We don't have that. Two no trump, which show 18, 19. Not close to that either. So we're stuck. We can pass, and some some people might want to pass with a hand like this. I don't love it with with this type of shape usually. So the best bid is a weird two club bid. And remember, when we play a forcing no trump, we're allowed to bid a three card minor when we have a kind of a balanced hand like five three three two. Here it's a little different. We have to understand that we can't reverse. If we bid two spades, we're showing that 17 plus points. So we have a real problem because our hand doesn't fit with any of the rebids we're supposed to make. So here's what we do. We kind of make the least damaging lie. And, and the lie here is we're supposed to have at least three clubs. We're bidding two clubs with only two of them. And we're doing this just because most of the time partner's just going to take some sort of preference afterwards or bid their own suit. And here, if we are forced to bid, we just kind of have to be in there with something. So this is a, 
a problem hen and this is the best solution because you don't you certainly don't want to show uh, six or more hearts in this case right you don't want to convince partner they have a fit when you might not so you just bit two clubs see what happens next and uh, usually we're just not going to be continuing in any any further after these auctions all right sweet so we have opened uh, a heart partner bit two clubs we bid two diamonds partner bid three clubs and now we bid three diamonds is this three diamond bid forcing or non-forcing Uh, so the question here is uh, on, on the one note, the one note trump was the forcing no trump. So our our usual choices are if we have a four card suit, we're just going to bid it. But the problem with our four card suit the last time was it was higher ranking than hearts. So if we bid two spades over one no trump, we're showing a much better hand. We just can't do that. So we have to bid something. That something should be your lowest ranking three card suit if you have one but you don't so you use your two card suit it's a weird situation but you literally don't care about your holding in that suit because all you're already bidding a two card suit it's not mattering whether you have two small or queen in one uh, you're, you're not really dialing anything in there you're just kind of trying to escape that auction at the lowest level where you don't appear to have a fit uh, and i i saw a m number of you in fact the majority of you have this as non-forcing, but you all forgot, those of you that said non-forcing, that you are in fact in a game-forcing auction. You're, you opened a heart and partner bid two clubs, which is two over one game-forcing. So your three diamond bid, even though it looks like, hey, I'm just continuing to bid my suits, is still forcing because we haven't arrived at game yet. So this maybe was a checking to see if you're awake problem here. And this this time we, we failed a few of us, right? So three diamonds is forcing absolutely because we did not bid a game. All right, good, good. Still tricking you guys. This is awesome. All right, so uh, here we opened a diamond. Our partner bid a spade. We bid two clubs and they bid three clubs. Is three clubs forcing or non-forcing? Three clubs, forcing or non. Too easy, too easy. Clearly non-forcing partners just inviting to game. And I'm going to skip over a couple of these. Okay. So we have opened one diamond. Our partner bid a spade and we bid two clubs. And our partner now bid two diamonds. So we opened a diamond, partner bid a spade. We bid two clubs and they bid two diamonds. What's your call with this one? Folks signing up for any of those lessons you see here, right at LearnBridge.nyc. Free cocktails and control bits tomorrow night. Favorite cocktail and a bridge lesson for about 30, 45 minutes. You do me a huge solid by helping me test my lesson on Zoom and uh, do yourself a huge solid and uh, have a cocktail and learn some bridge. And then Monday night, the Robin Gavin Show fun times competitive auctions we're going to be practicing those may have a few other guests drop in and the wednesday and thursday lessons were strong this week very high signups quick uh quick fill on on both of these uh days so i might add a third day next week i'm going to decide that 
on Saturday night, but these lessons will be coming up very shortly, and the signups will be up Sunday morning for those, so get there early for these awesome lessons. And we have a whole bunch of you passing, which is exactly what I'm going to do. Well, let's talk about those of you that bid more diamonds. It's tempting, right? These hands are very tempting to want to bid more with because you've apparently found some sort of fit possibly and it looks like your shape is great. However, you may not even have a fit in these cases. Partner has simply said, out of diamonds and clubs, I prefer diamonds. And the other thing you might think about in an auction like this is uh, if I give you the opponent's bids and they're passing, it's weird that they haven't bid anything. So it sounds like a misfit from your perspective. So here, you've already shown your hand. Partner said, I'm willing to sign off in two diamonds. You didn't throw that improved your hand to some degree, not to a degree to be bidding again, right? So we just let this sucker go. We sit back and we play two diamonds. Boom, boom. All right. Now let's look at the exact same auction, but I'm going to give you a different hand. So now you open a diamond, your partner bid a spade again, and you bid two clubs, which is still correct with this hand. And now your partner bid the same two diamonds as last time. Make your bid here. Thank you, Carol. Take care. We'll, we'll finish up in a couple minutes, guys. This was, uh, this was a fast hour. Uh, I'm not sure if it went as fast for you as it did for me, but this seems like it just flew by. So uh, I appreciate you guys all coming out tonight. Again, apologies for uh, switching the evening uh, relatively last minute tomorrow. Again, I just... Uh, had had to work a different job uh, playing pro with a with a with a fun client instead, so I had to switch. I uh, hope you guys are okay with that. Seems like we had a pretty good showing tonight. Appreciate you guys all coming out on a Friday. And again, tomorrow night, sign up early for that lesson because as soon as I start advertising it in the morning to everybody else, it might fill up super fast. So. Free cocktails and control bids tomorrow night. All right. We have interesting choices here. There's one perfect one. And it looks like that is the third choice at the moment. All right, I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds. It looks like this was uh, one that required a little more thought from you guys. So what we have to understand in these situations is partner's two diamond bid is definitely a sign off. Okay, so if we do bid after partner attempts to sign off, we are always showing some sort of unbalanced hand with extra values, which is exactly what we want to do here. Uh, we we want to continue because it's still potentially possible that we have game and we have extra values that we haven't had the ability to show yet. So here we just bid two no. And this is probably right around like a good 16 to to 18-ish that's unbalanced, right? So it didn't really have a jump shift or a rebid of two no. So here, if you bid two no after the sign off, you're kind of showing this garden variety, unbalanced, good hand, right? That couldn't open a no trump and couldn't rebid two no, something like that. All right, so here, two no is perfect. The last hand, we were a minimum. So when partner signed off, we said, oh, for sure, we'll play two diamonds, that sounds good. Uh, here, we have a little extra. The worst case is, let's say partner doesn't love no trump, they can just bail out to three diamonds and we're not gonna be too terrified of that, right? Or with like a good eight or nine, or even like a, a flattish 10, now we can kick it into game and play a good contract there from this slide. All right. Uh, I am going to forward towards the end here. I just want to make sure we get through all of these so that you guys get a copy of this and you can take a look at these. It seems like I think I need more than an hour to get through this entire lesson, so maybe next time I'll start halfway through. But uh, guys, I really want to thank you all for joining me tonight. 
you will get a copy of this. In fact, I've already got my copy sent right to me. So maybe while I'm talking, you'll get that copy in your email. Uh, again, tomorrow night, free lesson. Help me test out uh, class on Zoom and grab a cocktail and let's let's uh, bid some hands for controls. And then Monday night, Rob and Gavin show. And then my normal Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning classes are going to be still live next week. Sign up on Sunday. And I am adding a class at some point. I'm just looking for the right time. So more to follow. Appreciate you guys all joining me. And uh, I will see you definitely virtually at, at a lot of these tables or in another one of these fun live lessons. And yeah, if you have any last minute questions or any super chats you want to throw in there, feel free. And I will answer questions for a couple minutes before we sign off for the night. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you all. Thank you for the uh, messages. Glad you enjoyed it. And I hope to see some of you guys uh, on Saturday and throughout my uh, semi-private classes next week. I appreciate uh, appreciate all the support. Thank you so much, guys. You are so welcome, Margaret. Thank you. Thanks for joining. All right, folks, it looks like no uh, no, really burning questions. Oh, thank you, Little Light Shine. That's a new name. Welcome to the class, Little Light Shine. Thank you so much for the super chat. Appreciate that. I love seeing familiar names in the chat. So this is a really good sign. We have kind of a nice crew here like I would have in uh, in New York for a, for a bridge class. You know, when you when you have a certain time or... A couple of regular slots you see a lot of the same names so that's always awesome i love seeing new names too so all of you new people out there and all of you uh stalwarts get the word out there and let's uh let's build up a community here this has been really nice all right folks that is all for me tonight again thank you for attending and i will see you next time folks be safe out